Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the morning market prep video for June 15th, 2020. So Friday, we had a nice little bounce back rally. We held on to some support levels. We're holding above our 50 day moving averages. We also um, held on to longer term trends, which is a good bullish sign for the market. But what's going on this morning? What could be affecting us today? How about we grab ourselves something to drink? Let's settle into our office chairs and let's prepare for the Monday edition of the morning market prep video. So let's take a look at what we've got here technically in our charts before we start um, taking a look at where the market is this morning. So first thing we, we want to notice is here in the Dow, if we take that longer term trend, we did hold that and that's a bullish sign for the market. We also held on to some key levels of support in here. That is also a bullish sign. But if we go a little bit beyond that, we did break our short term uptrend pretty substantially with that big sell off on Thursday. And we see fear really starting to creep up in the market. So a little bit of back and forth here and a little bit of uncertainty um, in this chart. If we take a look at our moving averages, you'll notice that we also have to recognize the fact that we failed the 200 day moving average. We left an island reversal pattern in the chart, which is a bearish pattern, leaving a window on both sides of that. It's a bearish pattern. And we are still holding above our 50 day moving average, which means a pullback to test that 50 day moving average seems possible but let's take a close look at what we've got going on this morning bears are once again on the prowl and one of the reasons they are is we saw news last night that beijing is reinstituting you know lockdown measures over there as coronavirus um, starting to perk up and we have a, a relatively large surge of or resurgence of the coronavirus here in the U.S., creating all of those nerves. We've heard news of Planet Fitness bankruptcy and all of these different things starting to circulate out there that's saying the recovery may not be as easy to quantify or as um, simple as the bulls may have led us to believe um, with this recent rally. So a little bit more challenge coming our way. So this morning, we're looking at the Dow gapping down substantially. And right now, the Dow is gapping down to the lows of that Thursday low, okay? So what does that mean? Well, first off, when we look at the, the futures of the morning, we can get a lot of emotion on that. Seeing those futures currently down 473 points um, as I speak right now, and they're bouncing around erratically right now, we see you know panic and we feel that little bit of burst of panic but let's keep in mind that if we hold that low of last thursday that could be just nothing more than a retest of support and we could see those bulls fight back and push us back higher we could also see the possibility that the the fear that we feel right now in the market could begin to subside and with that inside day that we had on Wednesday that maybe we're setting up just a trading range in here where we're gonna relax a little bit. That is also possible. Unfortunately, we also have to view the possibility that if those bears are gonna come back in here hard and push down, if we start breaking these support levels, that's gonna be critical. I think a test of the 50 day moving average is very likely. A test of the 50 day moving average would not particularly hurt us. If we hold on to the support levels, test that 50 day and bounce back up, I think we're okay in the chart. And that's a fairly typical thing to see after we break through a 50 day is we come back and test it. So I gotta say what I see in this market this morning is a tremendous amount of uncertainty. There is certainly fear creeping up. We have that potential that we could go from bullish to bearish in a very short uh, period of time with the fear as high as it is. 
But there's also that possibility that we could hold on to support. As long as that new cycle doesn't get any worse and we start seeing more of those things, we, um, you know, virus related things starting to creep up, we may hold on. We're, we're going to have to watch this very, very closely. And I want to, um, I want to, Put out the idea that one of the things we want to avoid doing is predicting what's going to happen next. When we predict what's going to happen next, we really put ourselves into a situation of extreme danger where we could let our bias lead us down the wrong path. The best thing we can do as retail traders is to remember that one of our primary jobs is to protect our capital. The other, of course, is to make money in this market. And when we have such extreme volatility and so much uncertainty and we don't know, we're kind of wedged here between a, um, a substantial resistance area and a substantial support area. When we're kind of in that no man's land, it may be a better idea to just protect yourself a little bit, kind of stand aside, let this volatility spill out rather than trying to jump in and battle so much uncertainty in the market. So kind of keep that in mind. Let's take a look at the SPY. SPY, um, very much in a similar situation. We left behind an island reversal. We have, we're wedged in here above a resistance level. We have a significant support below. We have our 50 day moving average down here moving up that could provide some support if we push on down so it's going to be really really critical here this morning who um who takes control will the bears um, really drive this sell-off this morning or will the bulls step in and defend let's keep in mind that the only thing we're looking at so far <coughs> excuse me so far is a retest of Friday's lows. So we're not collapsing. It feels pretty ugly this morning. We certainly have that possibility that the bears could resurge and push us down to that 50 day moving average. But let's not panic here. Let's just be wise about how we approach this market this morning. Don't rush, don't chase um, into the market. Let's wait and see how the institutions actually respond in here, who takes over. And then we can make our trading cues from the price action um, as we should be doing. Let's take a look at the cues. QQQ, uh, by far the strongest of the indexes, and there's really nothing wrong here in the NASDAQ other than we kind of, well, um, I think this is kind of a, uh, a stupid rally in the market in the sense that, um, the bulls just really carried this too far. And so we got this big, ugly reaction to the downside. Um, pretty typical in the market. We do that a lot where we kind of overextend in both directions. So as you can see, what we're doing right now is we're just kind of testing that breakout support. We're very, very comfortable in that breakout support, at least at the moment, and those big techs have been holding on quite well. My big concern is if those big techs, those what they're calling the big four, the big five now, um, if they start to sell off and we start seeing profit taking in them, this could get pretty ugly. And the reason I say that is it has been the tech sector and those big um, uh, international internet companies that have really done the majority of the listing in the market. If they start to sell off, if they fail, we could see the market slip uh, pretty substantially. Now, let's take a look here. We do have a gap right in here, and that could be a level or an area that could be tested in the market. We also have plenty of other support levels in this price action that could provide us support. This morning we're gapping down, as you can see, we're gapping down to the low of Friday and that possibility that that could fail or that possibility that the bulls step in and hold that as support. That 50 day moving average is rising rapidly, but we still have a significant sell off to reach that if that's where we're headed. So let's keep a close eye on this and, and work on protecting your capital here this morning. IWM is very much in a similar situation to the Dow in the fact that we failed the 200, we're still above our 50 day moving average, we have a price level of support in here and we're gapping down to test those 
lows of uh, last week and that possibility that from here we could slip into that 50 day moving average pretty easily so just um, take a breath um, don't try to rush into this market let's wait and see um, where we are this morning um, after we open are the bulls going to come in and defend or will the bears continue to drive this lower let's take a look at the vix and this is where my concern really lies and you guys know that i've been talking about this for quite some time that if we break this downtrend um, that we have been seeing in the bit in the vix I'm not particularly concerned about a break of a downtrend as much as I am as if we uh, push up and then hold this area as support. Well, this morning we're seeing um, a spike back up in fear. So although we had this pullback on Friday, we're likely to gap up into here on that fear. Whether or not that continues to push on up I can't tell you, but what I can tell you is that fear is going to create significant volatility in the market. It's going to, that that VIX being up here near those 40 handles is going to make option trading very, very dangerous with wide bid ask spreads, very high implied volatility. So what I would suggest is everyone be very careful, be slow to move this morning. Don't uh, make a knee-jerk reaction here in the market. Let's wait and see what happens next if they're going to push on through. Um, you know, those bears are going to push on through and break those support levels. Or if those bulls are going to step in to defend and we're going to hold on. Let's watch, wait, and see. Let's take a look at T2122, which is the four-week new high, new low ratio. And even though we lingered up here for a long time, I kept warning and warning and warning that we were very stretched and the possibility that selling and profit-taking could come in at any time. It finally did, and we broke really hard on that move. So what we want to keep in mind here is that we're t retesting these lows down here that we um, tested last week um, watch this closely because we're getting very very near if we were to drive back down in here we're getting very near this bullish reversal zone so if we start selling if we get more selling coming in and this kind of leads me to believe that there is that possibility that more selling could occur here in the market we could reach down into this bearish reversal zone kind of overextend like we overextended the upside, overextend the sell-off, and there may be an opportunity then where those bulls will actually jump back in and defend. So don't be too surprised if we see a little bit more selling and that possibility that we drift down into this area. Let's take a look at our economic calendar. And our economic calendar is pretty darn light for today, but we do have a lot on the calendar to consider for this week we'll want to pay attention to and as you can see we have empire state manufacturing survey today not likely to move us around much this morning we do have fed speakers coming back on to talk this week and we have a couple of big uh, Jer jerome powell speeches that we'll want to take note of um tuesday and, and wednesday keep in mind we have retail sales industrial production business inventories housing market index tomorrow and housing starts and petroleum status and our normal jobless claims and things coming in on thursday but not a terribly difficult week Unless we begin to learn something new from Jerome Powell and the FOMC and what they're going to do um, in reaction to this resurgence of virus or if there's going to be more stimulus from the government, we don't know um, on that. Just watch this closely um, as we progress forward. On the earnings front, we have a relatively light week of earnings. We're kind of winding down um those um that earning season here there's not much going on there so i doubt we'll get a whole lot of response but there are a couple of notables that i want to make mention of that we should pay attention to this morning uh maybe jks J jks is going to be reporting today one of those that might be a bit notable we have a kind of a pattern in here 
with um, these higher lows rallying up and if this can hold in here that possibility that this could move on higher so kind of keep an eye on JKS if um, if we happen to disappoint and fail we fail the trend and fail that support that could be a problem here for JKS as well for the short side and the only other one that I could really see that was really particularly notable maybe TTM so not much going on here this morning and I don't expect a whole lot of price movement as a result of earnings reports. But we do have a, a trend in here that we might wanna keep an eye on and if that can report well and hold in this area out to this trend, there may be some opportunity in TTM. So keep that in mind. So with that, everyone, hey, I want to wish you all um, great success in your trading. And I know this morning, probably a little bit challenging and probably this morning, everybody's feeling that ugly, you know, uh, uncertainty in the pit of your stomach, what happens next. And there's a lot of folks out there in the world trying to predict what happens next. But the fact is, guys, no one knows what the future holds. And all we can do as traders is um, stay focused to the price action and the price patterns in the chart. Watch them carefully. And remember, everyone, we don't have to risk in the market. We can choose as traders. We can choose to stand aside and protect our capital. And that might be the wisest thing considering the challenge that we're likely to face today with the um, extreme volatility that we're seeing spiking up in the market. So just keep that in mind. Right now, Dow futures have slipped a little more. We're down about 570 points. That would potentially mean that we could lose those support levels. If we're going to open that far, we could lose those support levels. That may bring in more bears. So let's watch that close. So with that, everyone, um, if this is the first time that you have seen these videos, if you could do me a favor, if you could click that subscribe button on YouTube and then also click that bell icon when it pops up so that you can be notified every time I post one of these videos. And if you find it useful, please do me a favor and click those thumbs up buttons and leave a brief comment. That helps me out a lot, continues to grow the channel. And I just want to say thank you very much for everyone who does do that. Let's take Take a look at some stocks that might be of interest, but I got to tell you guys, I'm not going to put out a laundry list of stocks today because I really believe um, one of the better things that we can do is just kind of protect ourselves um, in this wild volatility that we're seeing a lot of uncertainty in the market, but places when the market is uncertain that we can look for. Um, you might want to take a look at some of the precious metals, um, GLD. Gold um, may may um, see a bullish move today. We see that sometimes where um, when we have um, this uncertainty in the market, there may be a surge in gold, silver, those kind of things. That may be a place to look. You could also look into utilities. Um, although XLU pulled back the last couple of days, utilities can be a place that sometimes we see some buying going in, a little bit of a safety play. We can look for some of the defensive sector stocks, you know, stocks like maybe PepsiCo and Coca Cola and Clorox. Um, those um, Colgate Palmolive folks will, may seek um, some um, relative safety and some dividend yield and things like that in some of these defensive sector stocks might be a place to look. Of course, we can continue to look in stocks that have held up very, very strong. NVIDIA holding up very, very strong doesn't look like it wants to sell off at all. So those big, strong tech companies still holding up. We could look at places like Facebook still holding up. We could look at, at places like um, Amazon still holding up. And if the coronavirus um, resurgence is real, then um, these companies that did well in um in the lockdown mode may resurge and do well. You might look at... Um, companies like Grubhub, you might look at companies like um, EA, um, Electronic Arts, um, they did very well uh, during um, the virus. Um, Peloton 
is a company that you might look for. Um, as Jim's closing and we're hearing about uh, Planet Fitness claiming or going into bankruptcy, um, Peloton, uh, companies like that may receive more benefit on this as people buy that exercise equipment to stay at home. So th that may be some places that you can look for some relative safety. Um, I would suggest being very, very careful, be very, very cautious. I don't know what happens next, and I don't think anybody else does. Um, we're kind of waiting for that next shoe to drop here. Could those bears really push us down and, and break those bullish trends? It's certainly possible, everyone. But it's also certainly possible that those bulls step up and really defend those support levels and everything starts to settle out here a little bit. So just be a little bit careful and cautious this morning as you approach the market. Protect yourself, protect your capital. And I want to wish you all a fantastic day. We'll see you all right back here bright and early um, Tuesday morning. Um, be safe, and we'll talk to you all soon. Take care now.